I'd like to show you a few examples of single replacement reactions. And when you're assessing single replacement act reactions, um, the activity series is often used to determine if atoms will replace other atoms. So in this case, will copper replace nickel? Or is, is copper more active than nickel? Well, let's go to the activity series and see if copper is more reactive than nickel. And it turns out uh, copper is down here, and nickel is above it, so copper is not re uh, more reactive than nickel. Therefore, there is no reaction. Here, will iodine react with calcium chloride? Unlike the previous example, iodine, I2, is not a metal. It is a halide, therefore we need to compare halide to halide. If it were a metal, like the previous example, we would compare metal to metal. So here we're comparing the reactivity or activity of I2 to Cl2. In the activity series table, there is a separate column for halogens and a separate column for metals. So here we're comparing the halogen I2 to Cl2. And we see that iodine is less reactive than Cl2. Therefore, there is no reaction. Here we're asked if rubidium reacts with water. Rubidium is a group 1A metal. So recognize that group 1A and 2A metals, when they react with water, form hydrogen and the metal hydroxide. The reaction is balanced with one formula unit of each substance. Here we're going to compare two metals, magnesium and aluminum. In the activity series, we see that aluminum is less reactive than magnesium, or we can say that magnesium is more reactive than aluminum, so therefore magnesium will replace aluminum. I first have the unbalanced equation shown and then the balanced equation with three magnesium, two aluminum nitrates, two aluminum and three magnesium nitrate. Recognize this reaction between carbon and oxygen as a synthesis reaction combining two different elements to make a new substance. Your initial proposition should be just the combination of the two elements as given in these formulas, C and O2. A little research on your part is needed to verify that you have in fact um, written a formula for a legitimate compound. In this case, CO2 or carbon dioxide is a legitimate stable compound. Here is another example of a synthesis reaction, elemental phosphorus and elemental fluorine. Your initial guess at what the new compound would be probably be PF2, just combining the formulas as, as is. But if you do some research, you'll realize that there is no such compound as PF2. What you'll come to realize that there is a substance called PF3. So change the PF2 initial proposition to PF3. Go back and balance the equation. So I'm going to start off by putting a 3 in front of the F2. That gives me 6 fluorines on the left, and I'll put a 2 in front of the PF3 to balance out fluorines on the right. So now I have six fluorine atoms on the right and six fluorine atoms on the left. 
But putting this 2 in front of P of 3 affected the phosphorus, so now I put a 2 in front of the phosphorus. So now this equation is balanced with 2 phosphorus on the left, 2 on the right, 6 fluorines on the left, and 6 fluorine atoms on the right. Here is an example of a decomposition reaction. We know this because we are given this, the delta symbol, which is the symbol for heat. So we're going to take this compound and decompose it into its constituent elements. And that would be aluminum and chlorine gas, Cl2. Now at this point, the equation is not balanced. Using whole numbers, I see I need to put a 2 in front of the aluminum compound on the left because I have two chlorines on the right side. So doing that affects the oxygen and the aluminum. I could easily put a 2 in front of the aluminum. Now oxygen is, remains, and it appears that there are nine oxygens um, within this uh, aluminum uh, chlorate formula, but then this is doubled because of the two. So there's 18 oxygens total on the left. Nine from three of the ClO3s, that's three times three is nine, plus we have this two out front means we multiply this formula twice. So in doing that, we're doubling the nine oxygens. So we just put a nine in front of the O2 to get a total of... Here is another example of a decomposition reaction. Here, the compound sodium nitrate will not decompose into its constituent elements. Rather, it will decompose into sodium nitrite and another substance. Again, a little research on your part is warranted when you're trying to figure out what other element or what other substance could be part of this decomposition reaction. It could be, in your mind, possibly any one of these three because we have sodium, oxygen, and nitrogen, and we have sodium, nitrogen, and oxygen on the right side. It turns out that Oxygen is the other element that is formed in this decomposition reaction. And oxygen in its elemental form, O2. But now we need to go back and balance this equation. Because there's an odd number of oxygen atoms on the left side of the equation with an NO3, I'm going to put a 2 in front of the uh, sodium nitrate to even out this odd number. So now there are six oxygens on the left, along with two sodiums and two nitrogens. Well, I'm going to put a 2 in front of the sodium nitrite. That balances the sodium and the nitrogens. And it turns out that even balances the oxygens, because having two sodium nitrites on the right gives us four oxygens plus this other two, which is a total of six. This is an example of a double displacement reaction. We could recognize this because we have two ionic formulas and the reactant side. In this situation, we replace the cation with the cation of the other formula and the anion of, with the anion of the other formula, basically swapping partners. The formulas that are included on the right side of the equation are antimony sulfide. It's Sb2S3. This is because the antimony, the Sb on the, uh, on the left, is charge positive 3 this guy right here. I know this because it is associated with three chloride ions. And you need to recall that chloride is negative one. So essentially the math here is what positive number from the antimony is going to cancel out 
three negative ones, which will be negative three. And this one antimony needs to be positive three in order to cancel out that negative three. And why is this uh, two uh, antimony and three sulfides? Because sulfide, something else you want to recall from your ionic compound naming, sulfide has a negative two charge. Well, there are three sulfides. Well, negative uh, two times three is negative six. Negative six, as I said. There we go. And we know that antimony is, uh, each one is positive three. Therefore, that negative six will cancel out with that positive six. So that's how to figure out these formulas for these ionic compounds. It, it needs you to go back and revisit uh, ionic compound nomenclature and the common charges that uh, go with the um, anions. Let's get rid of these parentheses because we don't need them. Uh, remind ourselves about ammonium and sulfide. Well, we just established and reminded ourselves that sulfide is negative two. And that makes sense because um, remember NH4 is a cation with a positive one charge. And we just recall that a chloride, one chloride, one Cl, is a negative one. So this positive one and this negative one from the chloride cancel very nicely to zero. So these are two legitimate formulas that I have included. That's your first step, is to write legitimate formulas for these new ionic compounds, or these ionic compounds that form from this reaction. Now you need to go back and balance the equation. Well, let's start off by putting a 2 in front of NH4Cl minus. Well, that gives us the two ammoniums, um, but it does not give us the three chlorides that we need. Well, if I put a three in front of it, that gives us an odd number of ammoniums, but the right number of chlorides. Whenever I have a situation like this, I usually go up in count and I pick an even number. So I'm going to use six, six ammonium chlorides. Okay, so that means I'm going to need to put a 3 here. Okay, so that gives me that 6 ammoniums on the left, and that helps balance out the sulfides because there's 3 sulfides on the right. Now, putting a 3 in front of the ammonium sulfide gives me the 3 sulfides I need on the left. How about the, tin, uh, the uh, antimony? chloride. Well, I'm going to put a 2 in front of that, and that helps balance out the antimonies on the left and on the right. A 2 on the right, and now um, I'm going to have 6 chlorides on the left, which is the same as the 6 chlorides on the right. So everything is balanced. In this example, lead nitrate reacts with sodium sulfate. Another double displacement reaction because we have two ionic compounds. And if we swap partners, you see we have lead paired up with sulfate and sodium paired up with nitrate. Now the equation is not balanced. But what I'm going to do is put a 2 in front of the sodium nitrate. And now it's balanced. Why is this? Why is there one sodium with one sulfate? Well, we know that lead is charged positive two. We can get that information or determine that from the left side. Remember, nitrate is always negative one, and there's two nitrates here, so that means this one lead must be positive two. And Recall that sodium is always positive 1, and if 
you remember that sulfate, SO4, polyatomic ion is negative 2. This is consistent. Therefore, sulfate's negative 2. Well, the negative 2 with the positive 2 from the lead cancel out our 0, and this is a legitimate ionic compound. And the positive 1 from the sodium cancels out with the negative 1 from the nitrate, and that is a legitimate compound, but we need two of them, so we put a two in front to balance.